Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Sponsored by a Step in Time Chimney. Playing before more than 55,000 fans in Blacksburg, this was not a game Old Dominion was supposed to win. Of course, that's what they said last year. But with 13 new starters and a quarterback playing only his second game in blue and white, it was no surprise the Monarchs were 28-point underdogs at Virginia Tech. But again this year, ODU had the Hokies on their heels, and for a while, it looked as if history might repeat itself. What happened and what's next? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with Coach Bobby Wilder following a 31-17 loss at Virginia Tech. But Coach, I'll tell you, I thought that Saturday's performance was much better than the week one performance against Norfolk State. Yeah, I agree with you, Bruce. We were certainly much improved in this game. Still really disappointed we lost. I, I, you know, a lot of people are telling us, great job, you know, you hung in there. Well, the, the goal was to go up there and win, but, but you're absolutely right, Bruce. Much improved. Uh, and generally you see that week one to week two is when you see your team get better. And, and I like the way we played, Bruce. What happens is you, you learn to play. We had, we had 23 new players, 14 new starters, and you process information a little quicker. You think faster so you can play faster. A couple of key numbers, zero turnovers by your guys mm -hmm. to forced turnovers by your guys. Yeah, that, that was really big, Bruce, and that's what led to the comeback, those two turnovers we got late when we cut the lead to 24 to 17 in the fourth. What I really like offensively, 73 snaps, Bruce, the ball was never on the ground. There wasn't a fumble we had to recover. Stone Smart handled the ball 48 times in this game. As you mentioned, only his second game, 30 pass attempts, 16 carries, and we didn't put the ball on the ground. And then those two turnovers, Bruce, Marcus Haynes stripping the quarterback, was big, and then Harold Blackman, uh, first game he's played for us, uh, just a massive hit on Deshaun McLeese that caused a fumble late, deep in their end. So we're number one in the league right now in our league in turnover margin. Need to keep it that way. We sort of went out of our way not to talk about the defense a lot last year, mm -hmm. but we could talk about them this year. And boy, did yeah. they do a good job stopping that hokey run game. Yeah, really impressed, Bruce, uh, particularly, as you mentioned, on the run game. We're, we're giving up 100 yards a game through two games in rushing. So this wasn't just Saturday. This has happened uh, both games. And what Coach Blackwell's teaching and our players are doing a really good job with, Bruce, is, is the gap responsibility. Everybody's got a gap. And what I mean by that, there's an A gap, B gap, C gap, and D gap on both sides. Well, if you've got a hat in every one of those gaps, you're going to have a shot to be successful. And so far, our players are being really disciplined with that, Bruce. And the second thing, we're tackling better right now than we ever have. You're seeing guys get people on the ground, especially in the open field. But Ryan Willis, who mm. he's a big-time college quarterback. Yes. He played at Kansas. He's yeah. played two years now at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. He was able to come up with some big plays through the air. He was, Bruce, and that was really what got us in this game was third down. We held him to 47 yards rushing in the first half. We had a lot of second and third and longs, but uh, they made plays on third down. They were eight for 13 in this game, a lot of them long yardage. And there's some things we need to do a little bit better. We've identified them. Uh, if you're going to be good on third down, Bruce, you got to get pressure on quarterback number one, and, and you got to cover things up, make it difficult for the quarterback. Willis is an NFL caliber quarterback. We will not play a better passing quarterback this year uh, than Willis. He's a very good player, but we'll get better at what we need to get better at, Bruce. Now, after that first drive, the passing offense sort of stalled a little bit, mm. but then we're talking about the run game. Yep. Your run game developed, and mm -hmm. uh, some smart plays by the smart quarterback, Stone Smart. <laughs> good play on words, buddy. Right. You're right there. It won't be the last <laughs> time you hear that, <laughs> Yeah, that opening drive, Bruce, we went right down the field, and we're feeling really good about our ability to move the ball. We had some, uh, we had some critical areas, errors on the second, third, and fourth drive in this game, either penalties or um, not executing the way we needed to. The, the big thing right now for us, Bruce, offensively is, and, and you haven't heard me say this a lot in 11 years, we've got to get better throwing the ball. You know, that's never been an issue for us throwing it, but now we've become a run team. We're more two tight ends. We're really a run-oriented team. What has to improve the next step is the play-action pass because we're getting eight and nine-man fronts now. People are recognizing we're a different football team, and that'll be a focal point during this bye week. 
there were a lot of whispers uh, during the summer about your offensive line, maybe mm. because of its youth, it wouldn't be up to task. But right. I thought they did a great mm -hmm. job against a very good Virginia Tech mm -hmm. defensive line, opening the holes for your two backs. Yeah, they they did, Bruce. Again, your your point about the ability to run the ball. We rushed for 240 yards in this game, which is as much as you're probably going to see all year against Bud Foster and that defense. Our two running backs were good, and to the offensive line, that point, we had Isaac Weaver play center the entire game. His versatility as one of our captains is a big deal right now, Bruce, because he played almost exclusively left tackle in the first game, played center in this game, and Kadir Kunta, a true freshman, Offensive lineman played every snap at left tackle in this game, and, and you didn't really notice him. And that's a good thing when you're an offensive lineman. So we're getting better up front, Bruce. All right. You've got a very early bye week this mm. week, but you're going to need it because you have yeah. two very tough games after that bye week, uh, mm. two weeks from now at nationally ranked UVA, mm. and then back at home against East Carolina. They mm. come to your house. Good time for the week? Yeah, I, I like having the bye early, Bruce. What gets lost a lot of the times is they've had four weeks of preseason. So for our players, this is their seventh week. It's only two games, but it's their seventh week, so a chance to, to get healed up. It comes in a critical part academically. This is about the time the first wave of tests come, so that helps them. So th this gives us some time not only to heal Bruce, get focused on academics, but also now we can take a good look at who we are with, with 14 new starters. We're, we're doing a lot of self-scout this week. What are we doing well in all three phases? You'll learn a lot in mm. just two weeks of the regular <laughs> season, sure Coach. Running back Keyshawn Strong is on the Doak Walker watch list. That's the award for the best college running back of the nation. But can he outrun Nathan Epstein on the one-minute drill? That is a challenge, <laughs> Coach. Find out next on the Old Dominion Football Show. We're back with the Old Dominion Football Show. I'm Nathan Epstein with the One Minute Drill. And joining us this week, one of the star running backs of the team, Keyshawn Strong. So, Keyshawn, tell me, if you could be any celebrity for a day, who would it be? I don't want to be nobody but myself. I'm cool with being myself. What's the one profession you would not want to pursue under any circumstances? I don't want to be a trash driver or pick up trash for people. Your favorite superpower? I want to be invisible. I can be invisible sometimes. I'm just not going to show y'all today. You don't want to be invisible on the field, though. You want people seeing you carrying that thing. When I get to the end zone, I don't want to see them before that. Do you have a go-to karaoke song? Probably Erica Badu, uh, Green Eyes. What's the best pump-up song on your playlist? My best pump-up song on my playlist. I actually don't know who sings it, but it's uh, Let the Bodies Hit the Floor, a rock song. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. What's your favorite memory playing football? Uh, winning the national championship and Pop one. And finally, what is your favorite thing about being a Monarch? Uh, just being here on a day-to-day -day basis, being with the guys, developing relationships, and just being a part of the team. He's Keyshawn Strong, running back for the Monarchs. Keyshawn, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? All right, see you later, Monarch Nation. Coach Keyshawn and Lala Davis combined for over 130 yards combined mm. against a very, very good Tech defense. That was impressive. It was, Bruce, and more impressive is it was only a combined 19 carries, and they averaged seven yards per carry. Think about that, seven yards per carry. Um, we just couldn't get them the ball enough. You know, we didn't have the ball enough, and then we got behind had to throw it a little more. But those two guys, Bruce, will complement each other well throughout the season. Wait a minute. After all these years, is Old Dominion a run-first team now? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> all right, we won't. And we'll be right back with more of the Old Dominion Football Show. Welcome back, Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. And a reminder, you should set your DVRs tonight so you don't miss a Wednesday night of the Old Dominion Football Show. But if you do remember, by Thursday, you can always go to wavy.com and stream the show. Coach, an early bye week. Mm -hmm. What's your schedule like this week? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Bruce. There's different philosophies people have. Some people just like to practice hard and keep going. I wanted 
to get them some time off, and I wanted to get the coaches out on the road recruiting. So we, we got in Sunday, reviewed the game, went through everything. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they were off from practice. Uh, we'll get back at it early Thursday morning, Friday morning, get a couple extra practices for UVA. All right, with such a new and in place, very young team, uh, does this tough opening schedule with Tech, UVA, East Carolina help you get ready for the conference? We've only got about 15 seconds. Yeah, it should, Bruce. This is the toughest non-league schedule we've ever played. We're playing good football teams, and that should help prepare us for when we have our first conference game, which is a home game this year against Western Kentucky. All right, well, we've got a little time off. Do some recruiting. Let's get the players <laughs> of the futures in here. here not go. that we're not happy with the guys we have now. Good point. Old Dominion fans, no football this weekend, but a big one in Charlottesville next week on mm -hmm. national TV, prime national time. TV, yeah. Coach, thanks for your time. Get everybody rested up. We'll be back here next Wednesday night at 1045 for the Old Dominion Football Show. Good night, everybody. Have a great night, everybody.